Okay, good afternoon. Welcome to a special video lecture. There's just a little bit of fraction help that for my older son who's having trouble with his fraction homework uh, out of the Art of Problem Solving Pre-Algebra book. So I wanted to show how to, how to go through these problems, how to think about them, and I'll just go bang, 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 bang. Okay, problem A. 4 and 7 eighths minus 1 and 3 fourths. Okay, well, the first thing we want to think about on this problem is that it's going to be very close to 5 minus 2. So we think the answer is going to be something like 3. But let's see. So this is 4 minus 1 plus 7 eighths minus 3 fourths. Okay, this is 3 plus 7 eighths. Well, 7 eighths minus 3 fourths, the common denominator is 8. So this is 7 eighths minus 6 eighths which is 3 plus 7 eighths minus 6 eighths is 1 eighth, which is just 3 and an eighth. And we thought the answer was going to be pretty close to uh, 3, 5 minus 2, so we got 3 and an eighth, so that seems about right. So that's good. Yay! Let's go to the next one. 3 and a third minus 7 and 2 ninths. Well, this is going to look a lot like 3 minus 7 because 1 third is small and 2 ninths is small, so we think the answer probably should be around minus 4. So let's see what we get. Well, this is 3 minus 7 plus 1 third minus 2 ninths. Well, there's minus 4 plus, well, let's see, common denominator with 1 third and ninths is going to be a ninth. 1 third is just 3 ninths minus 2 ninths. So this is minus 4 plus 1 ninth. Hmm, minus 4 plus a ninth, minus 4 plus a ninth. How do we think about minus 4 plus a ninth? Well, if we think about it on a number line, first you go minus 1, minus 2, minus 3, minus 4. You go minus 4, and then you go plus a ninth. So that's going to be between minus 3 and minus 4. So I think the easiest way to think about this is to say that minus 4 equals minus 3 minus 1. So that this whole expression becomes minus, minus 3 minus 1 minus 1 ninth. Oops, sorry, plus a ninth. Minus 3 minus 1 plus 1 ninth, which is minus 3 minus 9 ninths plus 1 ninth, which is minus 3 minus 8 ninths, or minus 3 and 8 ninths. Or, if you wanted to, let me just check that that's on camera. I don't know how low I am. Yep, that's fine. Or, the other way you could do this is you could say this is minus 36 ninths plus 1 ninth, which is negative 35 ninths, which is the same as minus 27 minus 8 ninths, which is minus... 27 ninths is minus 3, minus 8 ninths, or minus 3 and 8 ninths. Either way, we went over 4 on our number line and came back just a little bit. And again, remember, we thought this was going to be very close to minus 4, so there we go. All right, on to the next one. 19 and 3 twentieths minus 9 and 13 fifteenths. Well, 19 and 3 twentieths is very close to 19. 9 and 13 fifteenths is very close to 10. So this is 19 minus 10. So we think the answer should be about 9. But let's see. 19 minus 9. This is 19 minus 9 plus 3 twentieths minus 13 fifteenths. 19 minus 9 is 10. Plus, now we have to get a common denominator with 20 and 15. 20 and 15, 20 and 15. So 20, 40, 60, and 60 is 15 times 4, so that's nice. So 20, we have to multiply this by 3 over 3. We get 9 sixtieths, and we have to multiply this by 4 over 4. So 13 times 4 is 52. 52 over 60. So we get 10 plus minus 43 sixtieths, which is the same as 10 minus 43 sixtieths. So 10 I'm going to write as 9 plus 1 minus 43 sixtieths, which is 9 plus 60 sixtieths, 
minus 43 60th. 60 minus 43 is 17, so this is 9 and 17, sorry, 9 plus 17 60th, which is 9 and 17 60th. And again, we thought the answer was going to be pretty close to 9, 19 minus 10, and this is pretty close to 9, so we're really happy. Okay, moving right along. 18 minus 6.5 plus 5 and 1 third. Well, we know from, from our arithmetic rules that we have to do what's inside the parentheses first, so let's do that over on the side here. So we get 6.5 plus 5 and a third, and we think this is going to be pretty close to 6 plus 5, which is 11, so we'll see. So this is 6 plus 5 plus a half plus a third which is 11 plus, well, common denominator between 2 and 3 is 6, so this is 3 6 plus 2 6, which is 5 6, so this is 11 and 5 6, okay? A little bit more than 6, a little bit more than 5, gets us a little bit more than 11, okay? And what do we have to do next? So now that's what's inside the parentheses. So now this is 18 minus 11 and 5 6, okay? Well, 11 and 5, 6 is pretty close to 12, actually. So this should be 18 minus 12. So this answer should be pretty close to 6. Let's see what we get. We get 18 minus 11 plus, well, I don't have a fraction here. So I'm just going to say 0 minus 5, 6. Well, this becomes 18 minus 11 is 7 minus 5, 6, which I'll just write as 6 plus 1 minus 5, 6 which is 6 plus 6, 6 minus 5, 6, which is 6 plus 1, 6, or 6 and a 6. And again, we thought this answer was going to be pretty close to 6, and it turned out to be really close to 6. So that's nice. Okay, so now we've done A, B, C, D. On to E. E, E, E. Okay, 5 and 5 twelfths times 24. 5 and 5 twelfths times 24. Ooh, this is really interesting. Well, what do we do when we multiply normally? Like if we had to do, uh, I don't know, 15 times 7, we would do 10 times 7 plus 5 times 7. Here we're going to do the same thing. We're going to do 5 times 24 plus 5 twelfths times 24. So that's nice. 5 times 24 is 120. 120, no, I wrote 126. And 5 twelfths times 24 equals 5 twelfths times 24 over 1, which we say these fractions are just screaming to be grouped together. 5 over 1 times 24 over 12. 24 over 12 is 2, so this is just 5 times 2, which is 10. So I get 5 times 24, which is 120, plus 5 twelfths times 24, which is 10. So this is 120 plus 10, which is 130. Now, how could we have known ahead of time that 130 might seem about right? Well, 5 and 5 twelfths times 24 is going to be a little bit more than 5 times 24, which we already said was 120. And it's going to be less than 6 times 24. And 6 times 24 is just this plus 24, or 144. So at the beginning, we could have said our answer is going to be between 120 and 144, and 130 certainly is. So we're happy about that. Okay, one and a half, oops, one and a half times six and two thirds minus four and four ninths. Well, what are we going to get here? We have to do what's inside the parentheses first. So let's see. 6 and 2 thirds minus 4 and 4 ninths equals 6 minus 4 plus 2 thirds minus 4 ninths, which is 2 plus 2 thirds is just 6 ninths. 6 ninths minus 4 ninths, so this is 2 and 2 ninths, which we'll just write as 2 and 2 ninths. So that's what's inside the parentheses. So now I have to, sorry, I'm going to have to erase that, 2 and 2 ninths. So this is the same as 1 and a half times 2 and 2 ninths. Well, we don't know how to multiply mixed numbers together. We don't really have any rules for that. When it was a mixed number times an integer, we knew how to do that an easy way. But I think the easiest way to multiply 
mixed numbers themselves is just convert them into fractions because we know how to multiply fractions. One and a half is just three halves. Two and two ninths is just twenty ninths. And now we can multiply these together. But oh wait, first we can we can use our commutative rule to make this a little easier. This is the same as twenty halves times three ninths. Just flip the the top. So twenty halves is ten. Three ninths is one third. So this is ten thirds, which we can write as three and one third. Yay! Okay, moving right along. Okay, five and one third. This is one where they're trying to trick you a little bit. Five and one third plus two and one third divided by three and a half. Okay, our rules for for arithmetic say we got to do multiplication and division first when there's no parentheses. So first we got to do this part. So two and a third divided by three and a half. Well, this is two and a change divided by three and a little bit, so this should be something like two thirds, but let, let's see what we get. Again, to divide mixed numbers, let's just convert them into fractions. So two and a third is the same as seven thirds divided by seven halves. Three and a half is seven halves. So this is the same as seven thirds times two sevenths, which is seven sevenths times two thirds, which is two thirds. Now, funny enough, we thought this was going to be about two thirds and turned out to be exactly equal to two thirds. So that's, that's really nice. So now we have, bring this all the way up here, five and a third plus two thirds, which is five plus zero plus one third plus two thirds. The reason I said five plus zero is there's no, there's no integer part here. This is just five plus one, which is, because a third plus two thirds is one, which is six. Yay! One last one to go. Awesome. And what do we have left? Three and two thirds divided by minus six and seven eighths. Now, this is going to be three and a bit divided by minus six and a bit. So let's forget the minus sign for just a second. If this was three and a bit divided by six and a bit, we would think it would be three divided by six roughly, which is about a half. So we think this should be about a half, except there's a negative sign we've got to figure out what to do with. Well, we have an, a positive number divided by a negative number, so we know that's going to be negative. Positive divided by negative is negative. So I'm going to pull my negative sign all the way out front and say this is negative 3 and 2 thirds divided by 6 and 7 eighths. Oops. And I think this should be about equal to a half. So let's see. Minus, let's convert them into fractions. 3 and 2 thirds is the same as 11 thirds. 6 and 7 eighths is, let's see, 48 eighths plus 7 eighths is 55 eighths. Ooh, this looks like it's going to be a mess. How is this going to be about a half? Ugh. Minus 11 thirds times 8 55ths. Oh, I see. This is going to simplify a little bit for us. Equals minus 11, th 11 55ths times 8 thirds, which is 11 55ths is just 1 fifth. So this is minus 1 fifth times 8 thirds, which is 8 minus 8 over 15. Well, 8 over 15 is really about 1 half. So there we go. We're done. Done with that fraction problem. Now that was a lot of work and a lot of fraction practice. And learning fractions can be difficult. But the nice thing is when you get a little bit of practice, it's not that hard to go through. So thanks for watching this video. Hope that helped you learn a little bit about fractions.